Okay, so uh, welcome back. We are here with episode three of the OpenStack Now podcast. We have with us Ronan Kaufman, VP of Product Management for Morantis. Hello, Ronan. Good to see you. Hey, uh, Nick. And, hey, and uh, we also have uh, my illustrious co-host, John Janshig. Uh, as it happens, all three of us today are from Morantis, but we are going to uh, give Ronan the floor to talk about uh, Morantis's new release, Morantis OpenStack 6.1. So, uh, good afternoon or good morning or whatever time it is for you and um, we have been having some technical issues so if you hear some uh, echoing just uh, please go ahead and ignore it that's what we're going to do uh, so uh, Ronan let's talk a little bit about Morantis and products for a minute so uh, for a long time Morantis was really considered a services company uh, but that seems to be changing now so can you tell us a little bit about uh, how that came about in Morantis's product line. Well, uh, I think for a long time OpenStack was in a state where you needed a lot of hand holding. You really need to have a group of people coming in, setting it up for you, and uh, making it work, then supporting it. And as the OpenStack matured, I think it becoming uh, more and more uh, an opportunity for more and more customers to get on board. Now, in order to do that effectively, you have to move from a model where uh, every deployment has to be done with a lot of people to a model where you can download a product and the product is easy to deploy and easy to operate. And Mirantis, uh as part of this maturity curve is also changing, changing from a model where uh, we are heavily focused on, on professional services to a model where we want to create this product where customers can deploy and then scale up and then um, could, does not need a, a, a group of people to be on site to, to maintain it. So this is how uh, we got into this place and I think it's thanks to the uh, uh, effort that is being done in the community and uh, the momentum that OpenStack gets. So it's not really just Marantis, it's the whole industry that's working no, uh, this way. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, like any open source product, initially it's uh, it's hard to get together and it was that way with, with Linux, it's this way with OpenStack. And as the maturity uh, you know curve uh, gets to a certain point, then it's time for uh, uh, the software to get productized. I think we're at that inflection point and Marantis being a leader in this community uh, is, is taking uh, an active role in making OpenStack more solid, more product-like, and we're also changing our business model as a result of that. I see. Okay. So tell us a little bit about the, the new release of Marantis OpenStack. So um, the new release 6.1 is um, you know, has several goals. Uh, we are moving into the productization mode, as I mentioned earlier, and we want to, first of all, first and foremost, have a more flexible ways to install because the first thing you do with a product is you have to install it. Uh, so uh, we've worked on enriching the feature set in, in Fuel, our deployer, to allow customer to deploy the product in various ways. Uh, and then we want to uh, make it uh, easy to operate, right? We want to make it high quality and we want to have uh, tools that will allow customers to um, basically operate the cloud on a daily basis. Uh, from there on, we're uh, wanting to improve the maintainability and the last uh, mile is actually being able to upgrade. So we try to touch on every point, and as we go forward, you will see that we're trying to strengthen all those points. I mean, installation, operation, maintainability, supportability, and upgrade. So, so when we go on, when you go through what we did in six one, you could really see that those things are 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 there in our new product. The other part, which is not related to the base platform itself, is the development productivity. Uh, we realize that as customer deploy OpenStack more and more, it's not the end game. They don't deploy OpenStack for the sake of OpenStack. They deploy to, de to um, actually use it for business solutions. And so we are making it easier through uh, various means to deploy applications, to share applications, 
and make it a very good and productive development platform for, for users. Okay, and, and how are you doing that? So <clears throat> if we put the uh, platform aside for a second and uh, focus on the development platform, so uh, we are heavily invested in Murano. Murano is the uh, application catalog of OpenStack, but it's actually much more than an application catalog. So um, users could create uh, their own deployment mechanism uh, for their uh, applications and use Murano to deploy isolated environments for their developers. For example, if I'm a developer and I want to develop with Docker and Kubernetes, I could uh, create the uh, um, this environment as a Murano app uh, and be able to deploy it and deploy it uh, and deploy it again in different environment, completely isolated from the other environments and completely isolated from other users. So full multi-tenancy for the developers. And when we take that to the next level, people can think about how to uh, use that for database as a service or load balancing as a service. And uh, one example that we've done is with Oracle, where we uh, actually work with Oracle to be able to provision an Oracle pluggable database inside OpenStack. And the way it works is that customers um, have a, an icon if you want to visualize it, in the application catalog. And uh, when they press that, um, Murano goes out to the Oracle database, carves out a PDB, a pluggable database, sends back the connection string, and the OpenStack user that runs whatever he wants to run can use uh, Oracle database at the back end. And this is how uh, Murano actually um, bridges uh, legacy or, or enterprise applications together with uh, OpenStack. They're not mutually exclusive at all and we want to make sure that the user is capable of using uh, anything that he has in his data center. Same thing goes for load balancer as a service. Same thing goes for monitoring as a service. And with Murano, really, you can make anything as a service. So this is the direction we're taking it. This is how we make um, developers and users more productive on OpenStack. Gotcha. Now, John, you've been doing some work with Murano also, haven't you? Well, uh, we uh, we got together to, to build uh, uh, videos uh, preparatory to the 6.1 release documenting some of these features that uh, – that Ronan is talking about. So I have been exposed um, uh, to, to the new system, uh, you know, that, that's represented by uh, Murano and its current level of enhancement, and also to a community application catalog, which is an important extension of uh, of uh, Murano, uh, you know, capability into the wider world and sort of creating a, uh, you know, an open marketplace for distribution of applications packaged in various useful ways. Um, that that was very much a, a uh, a, a part of the whole plan from the beginning of this development cycle, wasn't it, Ronan, that application catalog would emerge at an appropriate time and would... Yes, uh, exactly right. I think um, what we want to do in OpenStack is once we got over the, okay, we got it installed, we got it running, now we have to start making it very useful for uh, developers and make it available. And so, as you said, the application catalog is one way to do it. And the next step will be to be able to have a private catalog for uh, applications that, you know, if I'm an organization, I want to set up a, um, a large set of applications for the different OpenStack deployments that I have, I can do it. And uh, that's um, how we're going to make this uh, whole platform more productive. And so just to clarify what we did in 6.1, so 6.1 come bundled with Murano, with the new version of Murano. Although the new version is Kilo-based, we have it uh, on Juno as well. And you just got to try it. It's kind of um, drag and drop. You know, you want to create an environment with different types of applications. You simply drag and drop them into your environment and it all works. Uh, and this is the level of agility and the level of um, productivity we want to get to. So now what we're talking about here is we're talking about OpenStack in general making uh, making developers more productive. And <clears throat> when it comes to Murano, we're also talking about hooking into other ecosystems like, you know, using Kubernetes with Docker and the 
doctor registries and all of that stuff as well, right? I mean, John, weren't, weren't you doing that? Uh, yes, um, it, it's it's um, uh, it, it's astonishing, in fact, how um, how quickly Murano can install a working Kubernetes cluster, Kubernetes pod arrangement, and put an arbitrary Docker app on it. Um, the the setup work is 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 literally under a minute, and then you know you sit and have coffee while it quietly <laughs> deploys your you know your Kubernetes cluster, and there it is. It's a bunch of VMs, and it's you know deployed, and and uh, all of that uh, replication stuff that Kubernetes does, you know, <clears throat> keep app applications alive, you know, is silently pre-configured and works. Um, it's extremely you know impressive. Um, the 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 other. The other thing that it kept reminding me of, though, and and listening to Ronan speak, um, um, I, I was uh, you know reminded of it yet again, is that the experience of working with Mirantis OpenStack now feels more and more like working with a major Linux distribution. You know, for example, I mean, right from the ground floor, where um, where where all of a sudden there's a repository structure associated with each cluster, and these can be public. You know, authoritative repositories or or private repositories, if you prefer to assemble your cloud, or local repositories, even on the same machine. But fundamentally, it's it's very reminiscent of working with, you know, a major Linux distro. Um, the the whole process of you know of of installing, maintaining where the package is coming from, and then, uh, you know, doing minor updates to nodes and so on has been vastly simplified. You know, it seems to me much less. O overhead and labor associated with maintaining a cluster. So, uh, so Ronan, I'd be interested to hear your opinion on, you know, how much of a game changer is this, and and what does it really mean to OpenStack adoption in general? I think it's a it's a huge game changer uh, because, uh, as we said earlier, OpenStack has been very focused on on the plumbing, if you will, to get the thing deployed and working. And um, a lot of the customers that we meet today and are using Marantz OpenStack are beyond that. Said, okay, we got it working, uh, we got it running, we scaled. Now we need to actually make good use of it. Uh, and we have an army of developers and users that want to use it. So uh, please uh, spend some time making uh, that better. And uh, and we've listened, and that's what we're focusing. And Marantis is a company these days are focusing on those two aspects. Uh, you know, first, have a rock-solid platform, and second, have uh, uh, the best uh, developer uh, platform. So this is uh, the type of uh, investment that we're making, uh, and we're hearing from our customer that this is what we're uh, – Want, this is what they want to uh, see from us, and uh, this is uh, um, successful because usually the discussions we have these days are no longer around um, what type of SDN you have. We have that too, but uh, when we talk with a, a new major customer, he comes to us with a business challenge that he has. He wants to make his developers more productive. He want to have IT uh, done in a more agile way. He wants to deploy uh, NFV or he has a big data issue or, or, or challenge he want to deal with. This is the level of, of discussions we have and you can't have that discussion without enabling the application and that's why this is such a game changer. Okay. So, uh, where do you think where do you think things are going from here? So we, uh, I think we're aligning with the rest of the community around what is important to OpenStack, and uh, and those are the two areas. First of all, uh, resiliency and flexibility. So these are kind of seemingly contradicting requirements because if you do more things, you cannot be a thorough, but but we are definitely trying to do both, to provide more flexibility through plugins for a very solid way and make sure that we can scale and work in 200 and 500 nodes and it just works. Because the best feature that somebody can provide is the thing just works and right. more than than the bells and whistles right uh, at the right. end of the day if it's very fancy but it breaks too much then it's not it's not uh, a good experience so so that's one aspect so you know making sure that it's uh, it's uh, y you can use different repositories you can use different uh, uh, um, you can patch it real quick you could you know, operate it and monitor it and, and have a logging done right and, and all these things. That's the level 
And the other thing is, as we discussed, the um, ability to to um, onboard more and more workloads and more and more of your data center onto the uh, OpenStack environments. Okay. So what would you like to see happen next in OpenStack? Um, so I see that um, um, there is a growing emphasis on quality. And I think we are also very much into that. I mean, we've been the number one bug fixer in in the uh, kilo um, cycle, and we are putting. Congratulations! Thank you very much. Uh, <laughs> and I think uh, this is this is something that uh, we cherish very dearly, right? In the sense that um, it's not about a lot, a lot of features. It's about solidifying the current product to the point where you could work and it could work for a long time and if something breaks the the, the uh, remediation is is done quickly and easily so i think this is a direction that um, uh, we are going and i think the um, the community uh, is going there as well with the revisioning of the object and the ability to upgrade as a result of that with the ability to patch each and every part of the system I think this is the direction. I know it's less exciting than creating like a <laughs> shiny object, but I think we're at the point where in order to scale, this needs to work really well. And this is our focus and this is what we do in the community as well. So in order to speed up adoption, we have to do the boring parts. Well, I wouldn't call it boring, but it's necessary, right? You can do uh, patching and upgrades in very exciting ways, but um, I, uh, with, I think... With like a circus act? What's, what's... <laughs> well, yeah, you speaking know, of you... someone who maintains systems, I think the less excitement <laughs> yes. is better here. No, I, no, I agree. I agree. But I think it's going to be very exciting for us all to see an OpenStack get being widely adopted. I think this sure. is what we're all here for, and this requires a certain level of discipline uh, and uh, doing what you call the boring, but the essential pieces. And so if nobody else uh, want to join, we'll, we'll be there, And uh, but I'm sure um, the entire community will rally around uh, being um, uh, resilient. And, and speaking about rally, uh, uh, it is also a project that it got into OpenStack recently. Uh, you know, um, it was led by uh, folks from Morantis, but now is a community. It has a large community around it, and this is also part of quality, right? Rally is about being able to test OpenStack, get it to a higher quality. So we are Wait, kind of across explain, the board. Yeah. Explain for a minute what Rally is for people who aren't familiar. So Rally is a tool that allow you to uh, run test uh, test suites uh, uh, against OpenStack. And uh, basically get the the results and uh, in and do it in a community project way. It's not uh, like a proprietary set of tests that uh, somebody wrote. And you can write extensions to it, and you can uh, add modules to test more things. But it's basically a framework to uh, test OpenStack. And this itself has is a an OpenStack project and you're welcome to look and read more details about it I don't want to get into the the weeds of of how it works but um, um, this is the type of things that OpenStack needs to do a lot more of and I see that um, people are are rallying around rally and which is which is great so okay so John do you have any final Thoughts, questions? I would encourage people to visit Mirantis.com and look at uh, the very easily viewed short videos that we uh, produced uh, around the individual features that Ronan mentioned. Um, uh, there are a rally of uh, uh, videos up there, but what I'm focused uh, on now is is more the, the new features in uh, 6.1, the patching and upgrade process, the LMA toolchain. Uh, new fuel plugins and uh, the general overview video, which gives you a, a little taste of all the features that we've talked about in this broadcast. Okay, excellent. So, Ronan, any final thoughts? Um, not, not, not beyond what we said. I mean, uh, people were uh, wanting to see more people downloading six one and give us feedback, and um, you know, make OpenStack successful. That's what we're all here for. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. okay. So uh, next week we'll be back with a uh, non morantis focused episode <laughs> as we get back into the news. Also, I would encourage you to 
uh, come and visit us uh, at uh, subscribe.openstacknow.com to subscribe to the newsletter and also to go to survey dot openstack dot com to tell us uh, how you like your openstack news are you one of those people who likes to just see the facts and you feel like everything else is a waste of your time or are you somebody like me who likes to know that they have seen absolutely everything because they don't want to miss anything so uh, let us know because we want to give you what you want and uh, we will be back next week uh, once again I want to thank Ronan Kaufman from Marantis and my co-host uh, John Janeshig and uh, we'll be back next time Thank you so much. Bye-bye.